Hey, this is Matt once again with the Bad Santa video, and this is a paid request for Lucas. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, uh, PayPal is usually the best bet. I do have a Patreon and a Cash App because people have asked me about that. Uh, for those interested in requesting any type of videos, it could be a topic, a commentary, a movie review, a re-review, a reaction, video game, trying for an hour, a full Let's Play, whatever the case. Feel free to send it. I'll get to it as soon as I can. And for those who have sent it, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. But Lucas, very generous guy, he sent in a request for Twisters, the 2024 film that came out. And got a lot of praise. A lot of people really enjoy the film. They really like the film. They say, hey, it's a fun popcorn summer blockbuster and while this film did not make me mad like Alan Romulus, it's not god awful like Borderlands or Sashwars, can't say Sashwars Sunset or other stuff. This was a very meh movie. This was a movie that I watched and I will never see it again. I didn't really feel much of. Would I say I was a fan of this at the end of the day? No. It didn't make me mad, but it's just... Maybe if it's... No, even if it's on cable, I'd be like, no, I would just rather watch the first one. Because I know this is called a sequel. This is just a remake of the first film. That's really all it is. It's a remake of the first movie. I know people don't say, well, the first one's not that great, or the first one's not that classic, or the first one isn't that much to be pumped up about. I disagree. This is where we agree to disagree. If you feel that way, then maybe you do get into the consideration that you like this film a lot more than I do because you don't view the first film like I do. But I really like the first film. I think the first film, in my eyes, is a classic in terms of 90s popcorn summer blockbusters. I like the cast a lot in that movie. Bill Paxton, Helen Hunt, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Terry Ellis, Alan Ruck, who was in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I like the music in that. I like the songs, like Van Halen, Humans Being. I really enjoy that film. I know it's supposed to be a 4K coming out. I don't know when that is. I'd be curious to check it out. But I really like the first Twister. And I remember when this was brought up, I went, do we need a sequel to Tit? And, spoiler, no, we did not need a sequel to Twister. And this proved it. Now, box office wise, apparently it cost like $150 million, And it may... 200 and some million in the U.S. I think it made like 330 million worldwide. I don't know if that's a hit because if you have a 150 million dollar budget, and then you imagine what the marketing would have been, I, I don't know if that's really considered a big hit. People say it is, but I don't know. Maybe some other. I don't know. And that's the thing, like the care, like the acting was not bad. Daisy Edgar Jones, Glenn Powell, Anthony Ramos, I didn't mind their acting. When the tornado, when the tornado scenes happened, they were at times fine to watch. You know, tornado destruction. Some may argue about the special effects. I wasn't bothered by them like maybe some people were. I could deal with them. Maybe I'm being lenient on that. I do like that the director shot in 35mm. So I did like the look of the film. But I'm a sucker for 35mm. I think film looks beautiful in that venue. And so I like that the director chose that direction and he stuck with it. So I do like the look of the film. That's made it stand out in a good way compared to other films nowadays. But the story, some of the action sequences, everything just felt like a subpar version of Twister. 
idea. And if you don't like Twister, then you'll not give a crap. But I'm trying to see if I have the Blu-ray over here. It might be over there, actually. Damn it. Because I don't want to show it. But anyway. What I mean by that is there's very, very few, if any, references to the first movie. The only one I saw, maybe I missed them, was at the very beginning of the film, Daisy Edgar Jones' character, uh, Tate. She is with her boyfriend and some friends, and they're doing an experiment to have a Dorothy, just like there was a Dorothy in the original, but it's a Dorothy 5. Now, I think at the end of the first Twister, when they were successful, I think that was Dorothy 4? So then I'm thinking, so all these years later, we now just gone to our Dorothy 5? And why does this girl have Dorothy? And what's her connection? Because they don't say, like, oh, she's the daughter of Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt. If that was the case, then they did not make that clear at all. In fact... Her mom, her uh, her mom is in the film, and it's not Helen Hunt, of course. So I don't think she's not related to them, unless Helen Hunt really let herself go. It looks like a completely different person. So why does she have a Dorothy, and what? They also never showcase if the first film mattered. You know what they did, Bill and Helen. Bill and Helen getting Dorothy into the vortex of the tornado and the sensors, and did that accomplish anything? Did that do anything? Did that affect this world in any positive manner? We're never told that. We're never shown that. They're never mentioned. So it makes it seem as if the first film was pointless. And I hate when pe films do that. But again, because there's like no reference other than that one Dorothy, I might as well call this a remake. I might as well. And that was just kind of weird to see. And in the spoilers, more reasons is why I call this a remake. Which, if you're happy about that, fine. I'm not, because I felt it was pointless. Your beginning portion of the movie is your lead character is in a terrible event where people she know dies. In the first film, Helen Hunt as a kid, her dad gets blown away. In this film, her boyfriend and two of her friends get blown away. Time goes by. The lead girl is a mix of Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton. She has the kind of fear, but here more fear... And that more determination. In other words, something about her past affects her looking at tornadoes now. But then she'll do pill packs and stuff where she'll like look and she'll grab something and have a blow in the wind like Bill Paxton would do with like rocks or whatever and look at clouds like Bill Paxton did. So it's like they combine the two characters into one, which is Tate. Yeah, the series of tornadoes break out where you have these two teams. You have the down and dirty old school boys and gals, the wannabe, you know, Phyllis Seymour Hoffmans and Alan Rutz and that team of down and dirty good old people that are quirky and do things their own way. And then you have the more, I want to say pretentious, but Terry Elwes type of group. Even have a guy told Scott. Who's kind of like trying to be a Terry Elwes type. Like an antagonist. Um, I guess to be fair the difference is that Anthony Ramos who's a friend of Kate. He has her join that group. While they see the more quirky down and dirty group led by Glenn Powell. And Glenn Powell I would say. I, as much as I'm like why is this guy doing all these roles. He's the best part of the movie. He was the best actor in the movie because he, at least he seemed like he was having fun. He was smiling. He was being joyful. He's a guy who's a YouTuber that goes to the tornado and films everything. And they'll go to a tornado and shoot fireworks. 
and you know film it they have a reporter with them just that felt like okay that's the little breath of fresh air that doesn't feel like a remake of the first maybe that's why i was drawn more towards and i'm like can we have the movie just based on this guy a guy who's a youtuber he's a adrenaline junkie he wants to get the best footage he does all these crazy things but we see how he's very serious his group as they show they sell stuff but they sell stuff and take the money and buy stuff for people who lost their homes and Tate finds this out and go oh wow these guys are actually very sweet that felt the most refreshing because that was original for you know it wasn't in the first film but then they keep going back to there's these two teams, and at one point, one truck tries to veer the other truck off the road, just like in the first film. We start off small with the tornadoes, and then there's a bit where tornado attacks a motel, which happened in the first film, where they're in the motel by the drive-in theater. Speaking of that... There's another movie theater that gets attacked, only this is not a drive-in, it's inside a theater. Oh, the finale is we gotta get this truck with this stuff in the back to get in front of the tornado so it could be all thrust into the funnel of the tornado, just like in the first one. Oh, and the first one, it's a cow. Here, oops, it looks like I killed some chickens. So, it's funny because animals are dying. You know, that'd be a motif. There are certain shots where they're down on the road and you have the camera high. And it's like the same type of shot where we're up high and the, the cars are going like this. And you see them on the road going like this. And the camera's kind of doing the same maneuver. As we're seeing the car go this way down the road, or go, the camera's going around this way. I mean, these are like the same type of shots you would see in Twister. Not, maybe didn't remind me as much as Alien Romulus, but close enough. And it's like, it really is like we looked at the first film and copied a couple beats, but then we add a little bit here and there, and we got our movie. And I'm kind of sitting there going, I'd just rather watch the first film. I think the characters are more interesting. I think the love story is a bit better. I think it's a bit funnier in terms of the banter between the characters. I think the action is more intense. With the amount of... Like, there's CG, but there's practical they put in there. My like signs, big signs going through certain architecture when they're hiding in the motel. And at the end, when there's real cars, they make fall or they drive through an entire damn house and they do practical as well as cg here it's pretty much all cg <clears throat> there's even a point where oh in the first film they go see aunt Meg. here they see tate's mom i'm like okay instead of aunt Meg, it's tate's mom so <sighs> That's what I'm sitting there going, Jesus, man, like the skeleton of this is the skeleton of the first movie. Did you really, folks? Like, come on. So take a bit step back to get more detail. They say they're putting sensors up. They realize it's an F5, or in this case, an EF5. Uh, of the four people, three of the four of them are taken, while Anthony Ramos is somewhere like trying to warn them it's five years later Anthony Ramos wants Kate to help with this new tornado staining uh, session where they're supposed to get the system going to have these three things around a tornado to scan it the lead girl has trauma just like Helen Hunt had trauma with the death of her dad Meanwhile, you have a second team of rough and rugged people. In this case, Lynn Powell, who, works, who has a YouTube channel. They call him the Tornado Wrangler. He'll go up and shoot fireworks into it. Which, that was kind of fun to see. And made it feel different from the original. 
But his team is quirky, just like Bill Patson's team was quirky. Oh yeah, at times they use a plane drone. They're like, we got twins, we got two door nails, we got twins. We got similar aerial shots like we did of the first film. Of uh, Kate and Anthony Ramos' group, again, there's a guy named Stott who's pretty much the Terry Elwes of the film. We got a little bit of spectacle with the times they deal with the tornadoes. At one point, they did very close, just like in the first film. Remember, with Jamie Dirtz, and the tornado passes through them, and she's like, Oh, no, my God, we're going to die. Same with here, where they get too close. Or, actually, at one point, they're, they're too far away, because she's still steered. Another point, they're too close, and kind of in the middle of it. Just like in the first film where Jamie Dirtz is freaking out. In the first film, oh, we see a cow. Here, Anthony Ramos backs up. They, he hit something. Oh, I guess I killed some chickens. Like in the first film, they go through a destroyed town. Just like in the first, they go through a destroyed town. They see all the destruction. Here, they do the same thing. Kay finds out Glenn Powell and his buddies are actually good guys. Just, yeah, they're selling stuff. Because they're getting supplies for folks. Like water and food. They put up this whole thing where... Anthony Rommel... The, Rommel's his... Which... He was a guy who was one of the... I think he was the star of Transformers Rise of the Beasts. That movie. Which I wasn't big on that movie. The person he's working for... He's buying up all the land... Now, if you think that's going to go somewhere, it doesn't. It's like, okay, he's buying up all the land. It's just so okay to go, you're not working for some great people. And then he quits. And then that's it. That's all you hear about it. So, if you think this whole land development, him buying up the land, is going to go into anything else, it doesn't. <laughs> So unless there's something in the end credits I missed, which could be the case, if so I apologize. Does he just keep buying up the land and he's fine? I don't know. They go to a rodeo and there's a tornado and they go into this motel. Just like there's the drive-in theater and there's a tornado and they go to the motel. Only in this case, they hide in the empty swimming pool. <clears throat> they go to see Aunt Maid, I mean Kate's mom. I got so tired of the country music. I did it, it's the country. I did, we're, um, we're in the South. We're in those states. That doesn't mean we need to hear country music all the goddamn time. I do not like country music. I think most country music sucks. Are there exceptions? Yes. There's always exceptions. But I think a good chart of country music sucks. Even the first film had stuff like Van Halen. But okay, you just say, well, let's try something different. It's all country music. Okay, great. It did do something different. Only Sally, in my opinion, this sucked. And you know, it's all subjective. And that's my subjective. I got fucking sick and tired of hearing the damn country music. God. And crappy country music, too. I don't think it was good country music, so I got so sick and tired of it. So Glenn Powell gets her to go, hey, let's start the experiment again that you had back in the day. Uh, there's an action scene at an oil refinery, and there's a fire. And I'm sitting there going, you know what, a fire tornado? I saw that in a phone call, Into the Storm. And that I liked a lot more than this. To me, the real spiritual sequel, The Twister, is Into the Storm. Those characters I liked a bit more. That one felt a bit more unique than what I was trying to do. And the action sequences I got more into. And the different formats it was being filmed as. Where it's kind of found footage but it's not really... Uh, into the Storm I thought was a lot better than this. I thought it was a lot more entertaining than this. And I would rather watch that than this any day. So, if Twister is my favorite tornado film, Into the Storm is easily my second favorite.
So, and that did the fire tornado before you, Twister, sorry. Into the Storm beat you to it. I thought it looked a lot cooler in Into the Storm. Just as a gas station and blows up and... That fire, that fire tornado looked a lot cooler than the one in this, honestly. And they didn't do a whole lot with the fire tornado. You think, oh my god, it's a fire tornado. No, we don't do. No, it, it's a fire tornado for a bit and then they just drive off. And then the finale just felt really anticlimactic. I remember I watched the finale. I watched the finale and went, that's it? This really is just, they get the town. Glenn Powell gets pinned. Anthony Ramos quits his butt boys lead and helps take Dick Glenn Powell out. This water tower falls. They hide in the theater. She alone, because you can't have the two of them working together, she alone drives the truck, gets in front of it. It goes up. Glenn Powell saves a co worker from being blown away. Then it's over. Like, wow, compared to the first one where drive left, drive right, drive left, and you're all these combines and trucks are falling in front of them. They drive through an entire damn house. They get to a place where there's a farm. You see all the farm, and who are these people? All these like dangerous stuff around, and stuff are being blown, and they gotta, you know, make it. And should they make it? Will they make it? And of course, in between, they do the delivery of the sensors in between all that. That just felt much more exciting, much more of a bigger event, much more stuff happening. Here, it's like, that's it? They're hiding the theater that's shaken. She delivers the stuff, just like in the first Twister. And that's it. It felt like there wasn't as much peril as you would think, not as much obstacles as you would think, compared to the first one, as well as other movies. So, I, it just felt like a nothing finale. Really. And then it ends, and Glenn Powell and Kate are going to get together, and that's the movie. Like, it just, it was kind of a nothing movie for me. It, it didn't make me mad. Again, I thought the acting was good. Uh, the 35mm look was refreshing to see after many of these other films and the way they look. You know, dumb popcorn movies I'm always game for more so than boring, pretentious, slow as a slog, slugfest. If sluts fucking would be more exciting than some of these, you know, independent films that are trying to be think they're John Carpenter and they fail hard or A24 horror fart benders that their head is stuck up their ass so I mean I always be willing to see a dumb popcorn movie because at least there's some spectacle, at least there's you know stuff happening, at least it's, it's trying to have a fun bone in his body, which is more my cup of tea in terms of movies. But by the end of the year, this will be forgotten. I really don't see what point there is to be watching this when you watch the first one, which I thought had a better cast, a uh, better group of actors, more fun banter and energy between the characters. A more rousing finale, a better musical score and soundtrack, and you know has a lot more going for it than this. And this just was a subpar remake copy of it. I mean, not a one for one copy to be fair, but just you know copied enough and copied the skeleton of it. And like I said when this was first announced, this was a pointless sequel. And it was a pointless sequel. You can enjoy it all you want, but I just don't see what you would see rewatchable about the film. I guess unless you're a diehard Glenn Powell fan. He was fine in the movie, but whatever. <laughs> That's just me, though. So take care. And we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now.